the couple of days ago. And I thought it would be good to explain a little bit more about uh, what the Blender Foundation is doing, what the Blender Institute is doing, how it fits in the total, and what this whole idea is of doing business with open content, which is uh, something the Blender Institute is uh, exploring. In uh, my keynote yesterday, I mentioned uh, a couple of reasons why we started the Blender Institute. Uh, for example, the Blender Foundation has been growing and growing. We have too much work for one person online, just me only to do. We need to hire a couple of people, we have to grow a little bit. And it's not correctly to have the, all that business stuff being part of the Blender Foundation. It might be better to separate that and say, well, let's start an offices outside of and independent of the Blender Foundation to do some of the support, website maintenance, publishing business, uh, services, a set up training, and especially do the production of open movies, open games, or special effects. Uh, we started in a, a studio with 16 seats, so 16 people can do work. But at the moment, you might know there's a piece of the movie project already dealing in progress there, and we hope to start soon with the open game project. Another thing we can offer is research or internship positions. Uh, but right now we have one developer, Brecht van Lommel, working full time as an institute employee on Blender development. And I'm, of course, an employee of the Blender Institute and have hired a producer. And she will also be full time involved in organizing all kinds of Blender activities. And last thing, most important, is we can explore the Blender Institute training and uh, workshops for artists. There's a lot of need in the Netherlands, but also internationally, by uh, teachers or professionals and companies to have people who can train in the basics of them. And we have to develop material for that, or something we can do in the Institute. Make that available for free, and also do the training ourselves in Amsterdam. Uh, Another thing to make clear is how do the things relate? Because people might think, well, that's nice, so the Brenner Foundation now is being taken over by the Brenner Institute, and the Institute is going to define how Brenner is being made. Well, actually, the Brenner Foundation also never really was in charge of what Brenner was doing or how Brenner was being developed. The most important is to realize that this is where Blender is being made. It's the community, it's the online community on Blender.org. Everybody can participate in it. Go online, go to Blender.org. You can find a Get Involved link, a mailing list for websites, a way to get in touch with the development community. Sunday meetings, uh, mailing list, that's where most of the decisions are being made. Uh, the project website, SVN, etc. The Blender Foundation is and should be like a traditional open source foundation. Only responsible for funding, by like giving some developers a little bit of money to do things, or uh, sponsoring uh, people for doing uh, documentation projects. It can be a bank account so people can get gifts to the foundation to do things. Uh, it can be funding for an open movie project, but that's it. It's a bank account, and it should be a place and safe haven for the copyright of the source, of the source code, of course, and uh, the blended rights, blended.org, website, all that kind of stuff. It's important that there is an entity that keeps being the owner of Blender apart from something that has the risky commercial activities. Because at the moment there's a lot of work going on to make this open movie project work. It costs a lot of money. You have to hire uh, people, you have to hire apartments, you have to get computers, you have to get an office. All that kind of business now is completely separated from the Blender Foundation. Including the doing support and training which we are going to develop. But this is really a company, and this is really a foundation, non-profit, and this is for-profit. What I'm also trying to do is withdraw myself from this. But lots of other foundations, like the 
uh, Mozilla Foundation, Pipe Foundation, they have an independent board uh, being voted for by, but also appointed uh, to get like important people from the industry or you can try to find some what we call them just uh, bobos, huh? important guys or girls, women who like to help the Dunder Foundation to be in the picture, to get a good press, to do some PR and uh, public relationships, but not organizing things. But the Dunder Foundation is never really in charge of Blender, but they are in charge of making sure the Blender that our community can do what they want to do. I try to make a nice interesting 3D graphic of how the business model of open content works. It's a little bit dark. There is a button to make better images. <laughs> 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 it has limited, uh, limited color range, so we have two presets. Okay, this is how it should be. Okay, so we start with having an open project. <coughs> open projects can be anything, like an open game, or an open movie, but it can also be an open commercial. Uh, or open special effects in the movie. We try to fund that or organize it by having parties joining this open project in advance. Because it is open, like open source, there's no licensing business. For open content, you do the same thing. You cannot say, well, I have a nice open content movie, and then I'm going to charge people for watching it. I'm going to make DVDs and people have to pay for uh, the right to look at it. No, if you have an open project, uh, <coughs> people have the right to distribute it, copy it, put it in the cinema, or do whatever you like with this. So you have to get everything organized in advance. But parts of that you can get from the Blender Foundation and the community. For example, the Peach of the Movie Project is a development project. You have to get full rendering, you have to fix things in the rendering engine to be able to have massive environments, and we are going to work on the character animation. This is important. That's why the Blender community supports this project by purchasing the piece DVD in advance. This is part of the financing of this project. Another thing is training our courses documentation. You can set up Using the peace project, for example, we can set up training. At the moment, I've got seven really brilliant artists and developers in the studio who work on the peace project. But you can also use them for one or two days a month to do a training, which is a total commercial training like any company is doing in the Netherlands. You can easily uh, charge like 250 or 500 euros for a training to professionals from our own team. This can help us find us in another open project. But we can also make like documentation, books, DVD trainings for the eShop to sell. This subsidy and funds, uh, what we do, because it's open source, it's open content, it has a lot of interest from the Dutch <coughs> government, for example. They like to support open content and open source because <coughs> this is for educational reasons important. The industry, uh, the, the, the government doesn't want to give a lot of money to the industry for making closed training. They want to have open content training. You can find a lot of 
open content buzzing going around in the Dutch government or the international governments because they define that whenever they farm and training or education, they want the people to think of some kind of an open license so that everybody can benefit from it. Last thing is uh, the commercial side of sponsoring. For example, Elephant Stream we released in Creative Commons and we were in the beginning a little bit afraid for all the bad things that would happen if you gave up everything. It was a totally liberal license. The only thing we had to do was credit us with uh, the name Blender Foundation. And we thought, oh no, you get the Viagra advertisements, you get the porn versions of Elephant Stream, you get all kinds of things. But nothing of that really happened. Some people did remixes or interesting other versions of the movie. But the most interesting that did happen was a company like Microsoft asking me for the original files from the render farm, the high definition files, to get to Richmond to the Xbox team to do high quality codec testing. And they made a special Xbox version of Elephant Stream, sent it to all the Xbox developers for further testing and pro processing. They needed a quality movie which had no problems with rights. They never get that stuff from Pixar or from Disney or from any other party, but they don't want people to mess with their original files. Same was hap did happen by, by Philips. Philips High Definition TV, they are some kind of department, they wanted to test codex for uh, high definition TV rendering. They needed the original files in float and port colors to get the best codex possible. And you also might remember the high definition uh, DVD disc being published for Elephant Dream quite quickly. It was the first high definition disc ever published in Europe. It was an Elephant Dream. The, uh, the industry last year had a big show like IBC Amsterdam or in Las Vegas. You could see Elephant Dream on like 10 different booths showing because it was free. It was free content. All big companies usually. But at the moment I'm talking to a couple of those companies, like uh, there's one is Philips 3D Television. They, they have a television system that allows you to store nine images. They use quite primitive technology to, uh, to do that. It looks a bit, you know, wow, it's, uh, it's okay. But if you make original renders of all these nine uh, images, for transparency for example, that they don't support hair transparency, no, I used to say well, that yeah, not, yeah. that. But they don't support that well. We can, we can get higher <laughs> quality if we can uh, cooperate with Philips 3D while mm -hmm. we are making the movie. We can make it <coughs> better than make be better demonstration material for them or research material if they can be inside of our process. Very interesting. They have no content. Huh? They have no content. No, they have really bad content. <laughs> Even active build bound is making things so yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw it. I saw it. <laughs> this is the Dutch insiders. Uh, <laughs> Another thing is, for example, for the 4K industry. Uh, 2K is high definition with 2000 pixels. Of course, everybody will have that in their homes in the next 10 years, 4 years, 5 years. You will be telling me how many years. <laughs> I already have high definition, don't you have it? Now you have to have a small little TV. I have kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, high definition is going to be a consumer standard, but the movies and cinema, they want to have better, they want to have 4K or even 8K, 4,000 pixels, that looks pretty nice. <coughs> but to be able to render and edit and transport and do whatever you like with 4K is new technology. We are developing source of software to transport stuff, storage stuff to get this whole 4K pipeline working. And there's a 4K consortium of universities and institutes, and they would love to sponsor the Blender Institute to make a nice, look, great looking 4K movie for them to do their experiments with. This might happen uh, early April next year. That's the project Durian. This is going to be most likely happening next year. We have about eight months, a little bit of a bigger team, 
making a 4K movie based on TV sculpting, monsters, Moscow's, no story, only special effects and lots of violence. That's what everybody <laughs> likes to make, right? Huh? I do. Um, the last thing was, uh, this is, um, I'm looking for a partner to do a special effect project. It's also a little bit missing in the Blender. Uh, Blender software misses good tools to integrate well in the movie creation process, especially uh, combining live action and 3D. There's a lot of aspects related to that which we can test better. So I'm looking for a filmmaker who wouldn't mind having his material being opened up in an open project so that we can pick up all of their content I make like robotic snakes going through the canals in Amsterdam and attacking the the dam and destroying the palace. You know? <laughs> that kind of thing. So it's nice for us to think of as a special effect movie, and it's nice as for a special effect movie maker that they can get that. Because it's very difficult in the Netherlands to get any special effect of any quality. There's a lot of not a lot of movie industry going on here. So as you can see, we will be quite busy in the next years. Uh, the Banner Institute, one last thing, is also not going to be for hire. They're not just looking for clients. But if a client says, I do totally agree on having everything published as open content, and they can participate as a sponsor. I'm already talking to some parties who would like to have an open commercial. It might be like it's a conflict, but it's not really. I mean, why wouldn't you be allowed to distribute a commercial freely? Like yesterday, uh, one of our users was not allowed to show a commercial here on a presentation unless the video was shut down, because their client doesn't want the commercial to be shown because of all kinds of right issues, which is, of course, ridiculous. If you have a commercial, you should not have any limitations of showing it, huh? because the more you can show a commercial, the better should not be within a bad context, but that's the, I know it from my background in the 90s when I did a lot of animation for video projects. The producers completely locked down their products with licensing. The commercial, I think the composer uh, does it, they, they make contracts that they get money for every time you get it shown on TV or blah blah blah. The producer gets money for every copy not even allowed to make copies of your own movie if you have a producer with that kind of contract, but that's pretty common. The open commercials and open projects means that everybody collaborates on it, getting paid well for what you do, but you give up on licensing rights. No limits for people to distribute. <coughs> but that was in short my talk. If people have questions, uh, go ahead. Yeah, one question about the Facebook class since it was used for FS3. Yeah. Um, there was one discussion, and I only found out through the discussion um, that uh, the problem is the license because I think it's problematic if it allows others to DRM the movie. And I think. You did allow other people to do anything with it. Yeah, but what do you, what do you think is good to allow others to put um, restrictions? Theoretically, like more <coughs> on, on the movie. Why would? I mean, just last thing. The Creative Commons license that Elephant Screen uses allows, does not um, disallow DRM. And I think that's a, that's a problem with the Creative Commons license, with this particular one. Okay. Well, um, what, what, what's your position on that? Yeah, but then, I know I there's fact four different types of Creative Commons licenses. Uh, we use the, the most light version, which only. Uh, demands you to credit us. You can also say share alike, which means that you can use it freely, but only within the Creative Commons context. Or you can say non-commercial, and then you can use it, but then not for uh, commercial products. But all these limitations I don't find very useful. And maybe the share alike is fun because it helps you spreading the Creative Commons. But that's not my my goal. I don't want to spread the Creative Commons. I like to spread Elephant's Dream. I like to enable you as an artist 
to use elephants dream to learn from. And our community also has commercial users. And if we would exclude them to say, well, it's nice, and we have a great elephant dream over here, but I'm sure if you are a commercial party, you are not allowed to use it, no, that wouldn't be fair. I don't have a problem with commercial use. I have a problem with commercial use. You want someone else like them put your hand on something. I think that's wrong. I think there should be this allowed that someone else picks movie and then says it with PRM on it. I think that's the problem. And I think it would be still available for the But why would it allow PRM on your open movie? I think that's But what would it help us if we didn't allow it? Yeah, but people might not know about it. That's the problem. And I think PRM is really evil. The, the problem then is what, what defines DRM? Is digital rights free? Well, what you say, you say it's DRM? Digital rights and it's going to be copy protection. But what, what is the relationship between that and the Creative Commons? Well, the problem with the, the Creative Commons license, elephants can do this, and I didn't know that until the discussion we had on termination, that um, it does not disallow DRM. So, um, I, I don't understand. Does not disallow? It allows DRM. Je mag, uh, als je de Xbox versie neemt, of iemand mag hem afsluiten. En je mag jou een gesloten versie geven van de film. Ja. But you still have to say it's uh, that free downloadable at uh, the website. That's the thing you have to say if you close it or not. You still have to say it's free downloadable. They have to be part of the Wonder Foundation. So people are like, oh, Wonder Foundation. Yeah. Mm. 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 But they still have to add the whole credits, which is part of the credit commons license. So they can only do that if they leave the whole movie completely as if we, as how we made it. So everybody who's going to the project is being credited now officially by Microsoft. Microsoft officially recognizes the credit commons license as a useful license. I mean, that's what you say is a benefit. Yeah. Yeah, but this way you also support the RM if you didn't like it. And I think that's problematic, it's an open approach. I don't have a problem with giving a woman a commercial use, but I have a problem with someone being around. I would never allow this. So I cannot choose this, this license from my world. So I, I use licenses that allow me to commercial use, but it would be RAM, I'm thinking against it. So It's the yeah, same thing as uh, GPL versus DSD, the software licenses for open source. The better license does not allow any third party to see the license. But we could have picked the, the BSD license and then it is allowed. It's two different things. First one is a GPL program. Uh, well, uh, what, do you, uh, what do you think is the future of the uh, free market? Yeah, with uh, respect to open content and open source. I mean, understandably for people like the, the Blender Foundation and Apache and all these these big guys, it's, it's good for them. They can they have a tremendous amount of PR, but for a software market and for people working with other kinds of digital media, media in general, it's a bit harder. So, what do you think of, like, I'm not sure it's totally possible to have a completely open-based market unless, like, government was giving money, like, in Brazil, and so, so what sort of thoughts on this? The openness of, uh, all you talk about open content, right? Yeah, the open source, movies. yeah, the program, software, movies, films, artwork, games, and Uh, for me, it's an experiment. I mean, the, the discussion we had about what kind of Creative Commons license could we pick or not. And Creative Commons was just there. It's a big organization that lots of recognition uh, internationally, so why not align with them? But it's very pragmatic because Creative Commons helps us a little bit in distributing uh, what they're doing. Right. And further, 
I, I'm totally happy with the CPR license of Germany. It helped us a lot. Uh, and I'm not planning on sharing it. And for open content, we have to find out what's going to work really well for that. And open content is so new that having a more restricted version of open content, maybe that's going to happen when it comes to be standard. But the moment, moment open content is so much different than open source, it might need a more different approach. But, uh, but understandably, uh, yeah. we have to find the methods that work. But, but it's very, I mean, for open source... But even for open source, it's still not totally... Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, open source might... It's not a lot of science that somebody is using your code to put it on the wall as an artwork. Mm -hmm. It might happen, but not very likely. <laughs> but open content, those kind of reviews, is can be totally surprising. You never know exactly what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. and, so, uh, having a li more liberal license makes your life much easier because then you don't have to check everything that's more possibly happening with your content. People can cut content in 20 different pieces and still have it useful. And with code, like two, but it's less useful. Software is more like something with like engineering, which is you need the total and all the components to work together, not to have something interesting. And for open content, it can be 20 pixels already, which is interesting, not the whole thing. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you license that? But you have like this, you have this whole market, and you can essentially lump all the, the software and content into one group of of media, or if you want to be more technical, call it IP, and there's all this money flying around where you're charging people uh, for if they use, if they take your IP and sell it, and you sell it to them. Whereas in in this open market, it's, it's more of a service-based economy, a gift-based economy, and the, if you think about it, if, if suddenly all the markets overnight when it's suddenly open, there'd be a lot less money flowing into the system because you're not being charged for this service, it's free. And uh, all the money that is in the system goes to a lot fewer projects because if you look in the open sources, the money is mainly from support. And the guys that give support is from the good people like Apache or Pro, everyone goes to them. So for the less well-known groups, I'm not sure how this open market can work with open content. So we'll find out, but we already managed to do two open movie projects in the other community. But mostly find them by ourselves. There's no big company behind it. Uh, you were financed by your community. Yeah. Huh. Well that's that's good. Isn't it? Not everyone else has a big community like independent filmmakers or other studios. Mm -hmm. Uh still yeah so about DRM I was just going to say that in my opinion, DRM is impossible to define. And that's why you can you can't have rules against it. It's like when you try to do rules against encryption, and nobody can define what encryption is. Because you know, I think the U.S. government has something that you're not allowed to do encryption that takes more than five hours to break or something like that. So mm -hmm. if I'm on the phone in the U.S. I have to call up an NSA person and check that they have a translator that can stand by within five hours to translate my Swedish. And then unless they have that, that's encryption. And the DRM is kind of the same way. What is DRM? You know, if I put it on this DVD, oh my god, I need to have a DVD you know, burner to be able to handle this data, or DVD reader. That's DRM. So it's really hard to do that. If I, if I for instance, am developing a new codec for video, I'm doing my own top code that no one else can, can read, except for, you know, maybe something I put out online. So that's a very specific thing where I've recoded the data into something else. And that could be called DRM, even though it's, you know, just because I haven't released the spec yet. So it's really hard to, to control that kind of thing. And, and about the, the open license thing, I think, um, I think Blender community is interesting because we're sort of setting it down and saying, this is open. But if you look at the real world outside, a lot of things are sort of de facto open. First of all, you know, pretty much anything you can download for free from BitTorrent, which is illegal, but it's still a fact of life that everyone does it. And then you have stuff like YouTube and things like that where just everybody's upload everything and sort of they take down stuff, but they come up anyway. 
sort of so and and big companies start to realize that hey, this is this is actually working for us. We're not like losing all our money because YouTube exists. So uh, people are thinking about open content. O although the big companies still you know are fiercely protected and say, oh, we own this and copyrighted this, copyrighted that. They sort of start to realize that hey, wait a minute, this kind of open model is kind of interesting. Although they haven't formalized it yet. So I think we're sort of very broadly moving in this direction, although you know, I think we're the spearhead of that since we're the only guys who sort of you know, uh, you know, we acknowledge that we're doing it. There's countries without copyright. In uh, in Iran they have no copyright and you can go to the supermarket and buy like this pack of discs called the King of Programming and it has every single software you've ever seen, like free show <laughs> Max, wins it. Windows 2000, Windows 2000 service pack, one Windows like, everything, and it costs the price of a packet of crisps. And they have no copyright whatsoever, but they do have a flourishing film industry. And what they do is they charge. The way it works is they work because you go to cinema and you watch a film, and that's how filmmakers make money. But with the advent of moving away from cinema, that would be more difficult. But I think. With, with this kind of open model, people can always find a way to round it. You know, the human beings are you know, very good at something. Well, it's also, I'm, I'm, my background is not as a political activist in open source. In fact, I was uh, using business, I had a, a, a major studio, a software business. I completely blend the institute or the Grand Foundation, they always had that kind of a pragmatic approach. So whether or not open source is politically good, that's one issue to look at. In the Free Software Foundation, we have the total free desktop, etc. The total respectful uh, goal, which is not my, my goal, what I'm looking at is what is the most efficient way of developing Blender. And open source has proven to be efficient, it has proven to be useful and interesting and it works. So that the simple fact makes open source working well in Blender. <coughs> The same goes for open movie projects. Uh, I'm not proposing an, a model for independent artists to follow, <coughs> but they probably can. Only a better community is big enough to support something like that. As an independent artist, you have to find your own way. I can't tell you, I'm not going to tell you that you have to use open licenses for your artwork. Of course not. But as a community, you can afford the luxury to use open licenses and allow anyone to do whatever they like with it. That's a luxury which we should uh, be very happy with. At least I am. I would like to ask something completely different now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. With your and so on. Um, on your first slide, I think you uh, wrote that you have internships and so on in the event institute. Can you elaborate a bit on that? Because, for example, it would be possible to it is possible, we don't have them yet. Okay. <laughs> but would it be possible in the future for our students to apply and come over for like a month or so to do some coding work or what is your plan? What what kind of positions there's, would be open? There's no plan. I don't know yet. <laughs> We've just started, so maybe we can talk about that later yeah. or something. I mean that's we would definitely be interested in such a project. Yeah. I mean, but the fact that we do open projects is not only the end result, but I also would like to open up the process a little bit. But we also have to protect the artists. So if the artists are being uh, bothered all the time by interns, then it's more like an educational uh, project, and not, uh, there's no movie going to be made. So we have to balance it a little bit. I would, I would think about uh, undergraduate students at the end of their uh, studies, which maybe do some semester work or part of their thesis there to implement a certain algorithm as a teacher. Maybe that you also need or something. <coughs> Interns make coffee. They don't call yeah. them artists. <laughs> you can make them right. cleaning and coffee. Yeah. <laughs> but then they are, if they are useful, they might become useful. I have in my background in the past 15 years only bad experiences with interns. Because they mangled with the code. <laughs> Just let them make coffee. Yeah, but, but that's because I always like to treat people equally and give them all the opportunities in the world, etc. And an intern, you can better treat interns as uh, nobodies 
and to give them the job to make coffee and clean and do whatever. And most likely they like it because that's a safe position and they know they can do that. And then when they do something successful in the code, they're totally happy and useful. And much better than putting them, throwing them in the deep water, as we say in Dutch, and tell them, swim, you know, <laughs> go, because we need a movie. And then they, they feel horrible because they, they don't know how to swim and how to cooperate with this process. So, but I have to find out what works. Maybe one month, maybe a week, or, or short courses, or, but, it, but because we are small, I mean, the institute can only have like 14 or 16 people working. There's one or two interns which might be part of the a movie project. And then we pick the best we can get. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any uh, structured documentation for the Peach Project Plan? I mean, one, uh, one reason why, project, uh, why Elephant's Dream wasn't as used as it could be used by mm -hmm. outsiders is that you have to be a little bit of a detective to find how it works internally. I mean, you can freely download the content, but that doesn't mean you, you can understand it or you easily can manipulate it. I mean, I'm not really a newbie, yeah. but... So, so that's one of the things we are going to f solve for uh, the Peach Project, mm -hmm. is make it much more accessible. And I want to have documentation, mm -hmm. better documentation, and more documentation, and we are Talk talking to... Hmm? Documentation. We want to have documentation <laughs> in general for how to do things, mm -hmm. tutorials, like how do I add a shot to the movie, mm -hmm. uh, how do I get this character moving, yeah. and we're talking to Bart, Bart, Bart here, Bart, no, not Bart, mm -hmm. but, uh, but like Bart more, might be one of the, uh, an editor for a book about Peach, mm -hmm. but how, um, picking up parts of it, to, like how we did it, but also, organizing a good tutorials and that kind of things. And that can be a commercial book, which mm -hmm. you can buy, but you can also put it online and combine mm -hmm. it. Like have it in the wiki and have a nice full color printed book. Mm -hmm. It's uh, being planned, but not concrete yet. Really? Really? One thing that I saw that uh, I missed on the uh, entrance was that uh, it has a poor data. Uh, I don't mean about documentation. That's one of the things that uh, needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Because if you really want people to use it, we have to document it. Not just documents in wiki, but uh, even on the blend files. You and know how documentation works. Nobody yes, watches. <laughs> yeah. Horrible. But that's why I was saying that one of the things you're missing is a good making of stuff. Um, like you can have a DVD for the, the movie and the content and have an extra DVD just explaining like this works this way, this works this way and you should use it in this way. We decided <coughs> to do this because of this and this and this. To tomorrow morning the police part like the same thing and this is part of the topic we would like to discuss with the audience about what we would expect and what we would think about our ideas. Uh, we discussed it in Germany, we have a couple of ideas how to tackle it, how to make the kind of use the block in a better way. Uh, the uploading movies and tutorials while we are working. But the problem with the last time was that we had too much to do, there was too much uh, work, and then in the end we had to do very quickly the other uh, That's, that's one of the things that. We could try now to integrate it. Like every week, we think of a uh, make tutorial. Make something like a video of 10 minutes. This is so how did I do the thing? Because you have to miss the time or store this. Yeah. 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 So and yeah. so yeah. we have loads of videos. So we have what we can do. Maybe those videos are not good quality or well edited, but it, it has a lot of information. Yeah, because uh, if you don't document it during the process, if you just do it at the end, you will miss like 50%. But it's still a lot of fun. Yeah. You and that would be. I was going to say about documentation. Uh, one of the things, yeah. uh, as an animator in particular, is that there's going to be limited usefulness to like documentation of an individual scene file because it's just in general very difficult to take an already animated shot and change it. Uh, 
And that's just a simple matter of the animation is already finished. There's a lot of keyframes, and when you animate something, you start with, like, blocking, and you move on and start adding details and stuff. Once all the details are in, it's very difficult to change it. So one of the things I'm hoping to do is just to document things like the bridge really well and make sure that, like, the individual components, you know, can be used and put together in new ways rather than editing the existing scene of problems. Okay. So how do you think you solve the real problem? Not making special files available and ready for people to start animating? Well, yeah. I mean, the bridge should be, you should be able to just load up the rig files and use them. Yeah. It's just a suggestion. Yeah. You had the problem with using the interns. Yeah. It would be perfect to do the documentation. Ah! No, they don't know enough about Blender. They have to ask about it. You have to be into it. So, yes, those interns. Do they speak English, write English well? Sure. Can they document? Yeah, they can also make videos, that's fine. Good plan. Okay. With the Blender Institute, like you did the physics sprint, are you planning on financing or sponsoring different sprints for also furthering Blender development? Not maybe directly related to a project pitch or something? In the future, for a week or two weeks or whatever? I forgot to mention that we did the two days before the Blender Conference a physics sprint. A sprint is a word being used in open source communities a little bit. It's a speed up and acceleration meeting. Get the key developers of some aspect of the software together for one or two days or maybe for a week so that they can talk and fight and have some food and drinks together about a specific aspect of the software. To, uh, that seems to help a lot. I think we did it also here about the physics code in Blender. Uh, this presentation is going to happen. Today, I think, at 4 o'clock, something, I forgot. We had all the physics print uh, results, and it was very useful. So, yes, I would love to organize that more of uh, On any topic, it can be yeah. interface coding, the rendering, it can be the Python. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think for the Python key team, of Python developers, they really should be locked up for like a week in one, in one mm -hmm. room to get over all the problems in the API yeah. and try to solve all these things. Yeah. Because That's I think that, that would also uh, allow like people who are not doing planner development full time mm -hmm. uh, for a week, you could yeah. always get some free time and participate and yeah. do something which would never be possible yeah. if you had a three month project or something. But you are always welcome anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and two questions. One is, where does the eShop fit in your schematic? The eShop is part of the Blender Institute. The eShop is from the Institute. But the profits go to the foundation. Okay, now, are you planning to right. cooperate with, uh, like, for example, uh, sell the nice movie we saw this morning, we cooperate with other people, are there plans for that, or is that possible at all, or like the chap over there it says small people find it hard to find a big uh, organization, might be a good idea to sell via the eShop or not, the Blender eShop, Blender products? Uh, Blender products, yes, but I mean, I, I've been I've, I've already like 20 Blender books out there. Yeah, but maybe the movie, a, a movie project? Yeah, but somebody the Bono uh, Vampire Project. Vampire project? Uh, yeah, we, we could do that. Could but there's a, a limit to that, of course. I mean, uh, the practical you only want to sell one movie a year yourself, or what's the limit? Yeah, uh, <laughs> maybe, I don't know, but there's also there's a lot of extra work to do that. And you might get a too complicated e-shop and nobody can find anything mm -hmm. anymore, don't know okay. what it is. But on the other hand, maybe you can then send like a hundred DVDs to him and he does the distribution in America. So you are contactable for that? Or? I have to take it over, but it's also a discussion topic. Because on one hand, it might be more pure to limit the, the Blender.org business to Blender.org business, which is, it has to be related to the open source development of Blender. It has to benefit the open source projects uh, around Blender. If you try to support 
אין לי פרנסו מהתחומיות בנדר, הפלימיפרוש, המורנאו, הרמני עטר של גיימרס, ואין לי שום פרוזק אאוסייד את בנדר דוד אורק. רק הבלנדר עטר של דוד אורק, הבלנדר נשר, עוד הרבה פשט, שתהיו פונקשן עם הבטר ווי. ודאי כאן קצת גוגל אדס, ועוד דאט קאר אוף דאנג שתהיו דאנג ביזנס, דאי קוד שטאט, אבל איש לא פשוט. ‫תודה. to try to make happen, you know? Yeah, but, but maybe... The project is already a nightmare. Maybe your producer doesn't mind becoming a publisher. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Publishing business can be very profitable. Uh, to, tomorrow there's two sessions about education. I uh, think in the second session we will discuss the certification program as well. We didn't announce it well, but who is that too? The certification guy is there. You can kill him. Yeah. Uh, we, we do have a plan for how we proceed, but everybody keeps being too busy. You know? He's successful, he has lots of business. He's animate, even when he goes to Sigraf, <laughs> he's animating him for his job in the nights. He doesn't need to sleep. <laughs> But um, my idea is to hand the pass of the work over to Margaret, to do and Margaret have to talk to uh, one of these days, and the contact with it's, it's, it's part of our job too. Sometimes you cannot depend on your volunteers anymore. It's just a service uh, we can provide. If you are interested in it, contact me or Jason, and we will help you. I'm not sure if you'd like this idea, but there's always merchandise, and if you can make a real cute music, yeah. you could maybe make a real cute product. What kind of product? Um, I don't know, but you'll rub it coming up. <laughs> like some balls or... Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Selling bunnies. <laughs> Look what? Finally, we have the useful until the actual video. I'm looking for a way how to get little balls made, like to be in front. But uh, I have to find some place in ACI or whatever where they make those plastic dolls. Because we can only make them in limited, in like a couple of hundred or so. But you do have the digital printing, you know, you know, You have to pay 200 euros for a little doll, that's not useful. But I need those, like these Pokemon figures you can buy in the stores for one or two euros. So how do you make them? How do you design them? I don't know. Yeah, you don't have any. You know? Yeah. Excellent. It's fun. Yeah. Also, I think many can have more, more, uh, like the, the, the four main characters of the Beach Project. ‫אז <laughs> 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 ‫אז זה סתם, תודה רבה. ‫-תודה רבה. ‫תודה 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 רבה. 